Well, those of you who have followed Kanye West and have been wondering what's going on with him, he finally came out of hiding, what I speak of, of hiding. And he did an interview recently. And I just, I'm so sad, but I also have so much hope for Kanye West or Ye West as he goes by now because of a legitimate God encounter, I believe he had. I was, you know, I did a lot of reporting on Kanye. I actually, again, I have a hard time calling him Ye now, but Ye West, I talked to friends around him during when he had the gospel choir, I talked to people who were in his life who were Christians who produced and recorded with them. I talked to um, everyone around his life it felt like that had any kind of Christian um, sentimentality at all or who were real believers. And he was going through a period back in just a few years ago where he had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And then he felt like God told him, if you go after gospel music, I will heal your mind and I will heal this thing that's inside of you that you can't, that you've been wrestling with. And so during that time, he started this incredible gospel choir that, I mean, I went and saw, I believe several times. It was just absolutely amazing. And, and then he disappeared after a lot of public disappointment, after some, what looked like a very manic break to a lot of people. But, you know, he was married to Kim Kardashian, of course, and Kim, um, that public divorce was so hard and they shared it on the Kardashians and their show. And then there was just a lot of information and it seemed like the world turned against Ye West for just a minute. And then all of a sudden he came back. And when he came back, he shared that he had a lot of, um, questions about God. He has a lot of, uh, n barely any answered prayers of none. And he's talked about how, when he was interviewed, again, this was on big boy TV, for those of you who don't know, with the rapper Ty Dolla Sign, uh, who's a collaborator on his new album. And his new album, by the way, I wouldn't encourage you to listen to it. I was watching the videos and I was just like, cause he released on TikTok and I'm going, oh no. It's such, not just a regression, but it's a new stand where he's coming out of a place where he really believes he's God. He really believes that he's the Lord of his own life. He believes in multiple realities. He believes that the symbolism of Bible is something to be used for your own personal gain. And it's just really sad, but this is really a call to pray for Kanye, but I want us to watch this together again. You can call him, yeah, you can call him Kanye, whatever you want to call him. But we're talking about this person who is deconstructing their faith right now in a very public way. It was one of the most powerful people in society, was the most reported about person for about a three year period in the news, even above Trump when Trump was in office, and stood on the stage of Joel Osteen's church, went on several Christian um, uh, radio shows, won more gospel um, awards than, than anybody else in the years that he releases gospel albums. And so this is a man who stood in Christian's, Christianity's light for a minute, decided it wasn't for him, and is now pursuing his own gain and his own glorification. So let's look at this and let's watch the first video. What is the difference though when you hear and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind of you're, you're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king. But this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times, I just feel like in our society in America, you know. Before he was in that, you can just see the place of pain right now where he he tried to lean into his faith. And, and he I don't think he was trying to be transactional with God. I don't think he was trying to be like, you do this for me and I'll do this for you. But we do oftentimes pray or the place of pain. I mean, he was probably saying, heal my bipolar disorder, heal my family, change my family, change my wife and her values, change all these things he was battling with. Then he had whole organizations coming against him. He did some political battles where he stood up for some causes that may or may not have been the right causes for him to stand out and put his, you know, put a foot forward in politics, try to run for president, all these things. And got to the point where some of the statements he made caused whole brands to back away from him that were unnecessary statements that aren't necessarily the place you want to fight the most for when you're trying to just get your family in order, when you're just trying to get life in order. So he would, you could tell the pain he's in because he was trying to get help. I'm not sure what his process was and his own relationship with God during that point, but it sounds like the pain is real. Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, 
you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. So again, this is the argument that so many people have with Christianity right now is that it's not transformational. And it's not, it's not, there's not enough Christians who are actually willing to put themselves out there to do something, to follow through when somebody's in pain, when somebody's going through something. It's like, if we had a huge revival right now and you have the same thing happened in the Jesus People movement where, you know, millions of people get saved all in a couple year period and they need housing and they need family therapy and they need uh, food and they need to be, have career coaching and they need all this. I mean, a lot of these people were hippies who were saved in that period. If you watch Jesus Revolution, they weren't coming in like super clean. A lot of them didn't know drugs were wrong. I remember the, one of the men who mentored me years before when he was first saved, he was a New York Jew and he got saved and he was a drug dealer. So he sold pot and he was doing Bible studies, smoking pot and talking about why weed was for Jesus. And he needed somebody to come in and to explain like, this isn't where you want to start your faith journey at. You know, like this is like, let, let me help you and got into his life and he ended up going and living with him. All those kinds of things where it actually takes a lot of sacrifice and so when people are saying I'm in pain and you just say, I'll be praying for you, there is a mixed message, which is like, you're God's responsibility and you don't have a spiritual family. You don't have people to depend on. You don't have people who are going to stop for you. And that's why I love in Christianity, the centralness of it. It's like the Good Samaritan. You see that picture of the Good Samaritan where it's like he was the one, the Samaritans were hated by the Jews. And he was the one who stopped for this young Jewish man on the side of the road who'd been beaten and, and, and left to die. And he was, and I feel like there's these examples Jesus gives where it's like, Love has action. And so Kanye, the fact that he was here in his faith and his heart didn't feel like there was people who had action towards him and that Christians not actionable or Christianity is not actionable in our generation, which isn't true because Christians are doing the most about adoption issues and foster care. We're doing some of those feeding. I think Christians do 50% of the feeding for famine areas. We do a lot for persecuted people groups, all these things. Christians are first responders. But when it comes to Western cultural and civilization, Christianity has not found its footing yet when it comes to transformative issues. How do we participate? And we do a lot of times say, I'll be praying for you. And I think it's really interesting that this is one of the biggest turnoffs to Kanye and his faith. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We gonna we have to apply actual physical building partnerships, Hands and it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, "This is what I did. This is what I did." Like I mean, look at this. I know I'm not gonna third rail y'all interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. But what they do is they put us each in asylum and say your grandmother gonna lose her crib and this gonna, you know how many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? So he's going into the fact that he was actually um, put into by a custodian, he was put into an asylum and he was actually, why he was there, they threatened him that if he doesn't change his narrative and if he doesn't get better, we don't know what this looked like for Kanye. Cause when you're, when you're in an asylum or when you're in a mental institute, when you're in a place where mental care providers are providing for you, the way you're seeing the world can be very distorted and warped. And so we don't know what it was like for him in there, but, but his narrative has always been, I was controlled, I was manipulated, I was silenced, and people put me away and I got out, I escaped. And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do, I ain't had time to pray. You know, prepare your mind for action. It's like the Bible's all about, the Bible's an action book. If King David is more um, a relevant story to how we live out a lot of our Christian faith sometimes than we imagine he would be because there, there is a, a time to go to battle with issues. There's time to go see transformation happen. There's time to see the territory occupied and uh, with Christian values and, and with, with kingdom principles. And I think that Ye wasn't given enough of that. He wasn't, he wasn't uh, maybe visibly impacted by that or touched by that as much. But let's watch it. There's one more video that I think this is where it gets a little disturbing. And I, when I say that, it's not disturbing to watch necessarily, but where we need to pray. There's two jokes. One joke uh, that a friend of mine, I'm not gonna you know, put him on blast just because it's just about the joke more than it's about the name. <laughs> um, he says, you, he, he is a manager, he said, you know what I hate about artists? Um, they take 80% of my money. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and the other joke they had is, um, what will we do if artists figured out their own distribution? And the punchline is, 
we'd have to kill him. So I'd be surprised that I'm still alive mm -hmm. every day. How did you not so-called <laughs> disappear? This is the first time he's talked about this, so publicly in a major way. Like, because that's a hell of a fight. Because, you know, because I'm God. And anyone who disagree, I'm the God of me, and you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already. And I got number one from that. For all you know, I might be on like a fourth dimension version of the lifestyle. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like I said, I must have died in this accident. It must be heaven. I feel like, you know, there's people, tech guys and like Shervin or Elon. Elon always says, whatever would be the funniest outcome is what should happen. He's just thinking like, what is the most insane version of something? And that's the version that should happen. My boy Shervin said, God or alien or universal, whatever happens, it feels like uh, victory favors the brave. Mm. Again, these are good principles in the sense of victory does favor the brave in certain contexts. I think when he says, I'm God, he's like saying, I'm taking back control. And I'm, um, I'm the master of my own destiny. I'm going to manifest my own fate. And, and this is, again, this is, he tried Christianity and he got deep enough into it to know he did have some spiritual encounters and he talks about this prolifically through the years. But he also is saying, but God or Jesus himself did not answer that calling or that, that deeper place of fulfillment in my life because I am God, because I'm the one who's supposed to do this. And he talks about multiple realities and this kind of thing. And again, this is where a lot of people, I think the people are deconstructing from their faith in church. He's done it very quickly. Some people are doing it over time because maybe there's a, a, a certain issue that they're camping around. It's like, well, I'm not allowed to do this in the church. So therefore the church has failed me. God has failed me. All of this is wrong. Maybe it's just because they've been abused by the church or whatever it is. And you watch Kanye going through this. And I have so much empathy. Like I, I don't, I don't look at this and go, Ooh, I can look at this and go, Oh, I can't wait for him to get revelation because he's so brilliant. He's such a genius. And I think that's people like Ye that can actually change and then change the world, but he's not at the place on the, he's not on the, the pendulum swings the wrong way right now. Like the people that lean into it, that give, cause it's all like ears, it just threats at the end of the day. It's like, why should you fear? You know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear. What do you Again, that's not what the fear of God is. Like, you're not supposed to be afraid of God. Like, I'm afraid you're going to stomp me out. I'm afraid you're going to hurt me. I'm afraid you're going to take away my livelihood. I'm afraid you're going to not bless me. And that's what he's talking about. Again, that's more transactional. And the fear of God is, is more in Jewish thought is more like, I love what I'm building with you and in my family, with my wife, with my kids, with my career. And I want to protect it at all costs because I'm afraid to lose it because it's so good because this is what I'm living my life for. God, I love you so much and I love what you're doing in my life so much. I love who you are to me that I'm afraid to lose you. So therefore, I'm going to protect you at all costs. I'm not going to turn to other gods. I'm not going to turn to sin. I'm not going to turn. And if I do, I'll return to you quickly. Same thing with marriage. I, God, I love my wife so much. I'm going to protect her and protect the sanctity of this being a holy union. I'm not going to have affairs and look up pornography and do all these things. And that's what the fear of God is. It's like, I love this so much that I will not allow myself to lose. I fear you, God. I don't fear uh, losing out on your blessing because you're mad at me. I love who you are and I want to be in you and with you. And I don't want to make the mistake of even Adam in the garden again, but I want to, I want to walk with you. And that's what I want most. And I, I don't think Ye ever understood that, that it's like a protecting of love. You have that point. You're easily controllable. You're easily sellable. You're easily contracted because you have this fear on you. Like everybody gonna die eventually, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna live my entire life with zero fear. I love fear that. of a contract, fear of perception. Again, perfect love casts out fear. So what he's saying is scriptural. We should have no fear when it comes to the wrong kind of fear. We should have. We should be able to overcome all fear. We should. We should. His love, God's love inside of us, pushes away fear of con contracts going wrong or losing everything or whatever it is because God's with us, because God sustains us, but he didn't put those two together. Fear of getting my black card, denied. Fear. 
I'm not going to jump in front of a train. Right, right, right. <laughs> Be conscious. Right. You know. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting and also concerning where Kanye West or Ye West is. I'm praying for him. I hope you will too. Tell me what you're praying for him in the comments below. And let's pray together. Let's believe together that God wants to use this season of time in Ye's life to really speak to him and do something differently and also found him in the right Bible. Maybe he never had maybe biblical discipleship to understand those principles, especially because he was going a million miles an hour when, you know, he was a billionaire at the time and he was one of the most reported about people and he was interviewed all the time and he was, his marriage, his kids were on display at all times and he's going towards that trajectory again. So it's hard to find God when you're so busy on, on that macro level to actually spend time in those micro moments to actually get discipled to understand what the word is. And, and I, I would say that most Christians in America don't have biblical literacy. So it's hard to have a Christian or biblical worldview because a lot of times it becomes what we have views around biblically or what we care most about versus what the Bible cares most about. So even get, getting biblical literacy is so much a part of what didn't happen with Ye West. And so let's pray for him. Let's pray that God reveals him. Maybe he'll go back to the Bible, start reading it again, even Proverbs and Psalms. And just you, you just get conditioned by what you're reading to what God's like and who he is versus the principles and the religious and the rules and the, the transactional stuff that happened. So tell me what you're praying, tell me what you're thinking about, and I'll pray with you in the comments below.